And welcome ICS3C folks. Uh, our lesson today is on for loops and hopefully you've got the Code Academy done for this. Uh, I think the between the lesson and the Code Academy you get a pretty good idea about what's going on. Um, these new concepts are coming fast and furious at us so, so please be patient and the exercise will help, exercises will help consolidate what you've learned and and you know don't go too fast through the note take your time and understand um, so you're writing this down you've got a, a word processing document of some sort or smart notebook is fine and you're taking this note so uh, one of the best uses of computers is to do a repetitive task quickly we use loops for this so the idea of you know computers they, um, they can't think they can't you know they don't um, you know, they, they just follow instructions and the idea is if you, you want something done um, that's a repetitive thing, it would be boring for us to do, um, but computers don't even think twice about it. They'll just go and do the same task over and over and over again. It's a, a, called a loop. So we use a for loop when we know how many times we want to execute the same set of statements. We'll see later that we can loop um, until a, uh, a certain condition uh, happens or while a certain condition is true. But a for loop, also called a counted loop, will go a certain number of times, you know, and, and we'll, uh, we'll get to that, uh, that soon. So we'll, we know how many times the code is going to be run. The general syntax, and this is going to look strange, but be patient. It has the keyword for. And then in brackets, there are three parts separated by semicolons. Um, this initialization is a statement. And so is, con well, condition is, is again, uh, a statement. And increment is another statement. These are all bits and pieces that we'll put together. And then we have curly brackets. And um, these are the statements here. This is just a comment, of course. And that's going to be repeated uh, for how many times that we need to repeat the, uh, the for loop. Uh, so the first part is initialization includes a variable declaration and initial value. So example is counter equals zero. So this first part here usually looks like this. And counter can be any variable name. That's We chose that. Usually for some reason we use i. i for index for the loop. Um, and it's we use it uh, to count the number of times the loop will be uh, executed. And then condition is just like when we did the if statements. Condition is going to be a true or false thing. It's a test of some, some sort. It's tested each time the loop runs. The loop stops when condition is false. So the second thing is some sort of condition. Um, and it looks more like this, maybe counter is less than five. Notice if we started at zero and counter was less than five, well then that, that would be true. The computer looks up and say, well what's the value of counter right now? Is it less than or equal to five? And if that condition is true, then the loop will continue. Now notice if we don't, if we never changed counter in this case, then the loop would go on forever. And so the last statement, the increment statement, is what changes the counter. Um, it's a calculation that usually increments the loop counter. So counter equals counter plus one. And I think I've got my JS bin going here where we're going to uh, show this. So for the initial value is var counter equals one. We want to do it while counter is less than or equal to five. And uh, by the way, I think it's a good idea that you type along with me and uh, counter equals counter plus one and start and end um, curly brackets for the for loop and notice that at least JS bin uh, indents a little bit for us which is kind of nice and I'm just going to console log hello world. So how many times is this going to actually do this? Well, counter will be 1, and then it will be 2, and then it will be 3, and then it will be 4, and it will be 5. And so is it, is it going to actually execute a fifth time? 
Well, if this is true, it will execute. Is 5 less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. So it will execute a fifth time. It should, as long as I don't mess this up, um, run five times. I'm going to put my console up and run. Now, there we go. Hello world, hello world, hello world. There's five times. Dandy. And I think back in my note, uh, putting it all together, there's there's the um, there's the program. Uh, a short form is counter plus plus often takes the place of this. It's a it's a short form. So I want to show you that it's you know it means counter equals counter plus one, but it's a short form. And I think that came up in Code Academy. So I wanted to show that that's uh, that's works. Yeah, it works the same counter plus plus. Do I care which one you use? No, I do not care which one you use. A more productive example. So this one's going to be near and dear to our hearts because we did this for one for warm up today. Um, and I've typed this all out. I'm going to actually just copy this into a new bin. Um, file. Oh, can I do a new bin? Yep, yeah, new. Boom. New bin. Paste that in there. Notice that when I pasted it, it messed up a little bit. Uh, good. That looks good. So notice I use the counter I. And I is less than or equal to 5. So that means it's going to go from 1 to 5, 5 times, I++. Plus plus. And then notice that it's got a prompt. Uh, how much did you spend on lunch, on day, whatever? And then it asks me, um, it's going to ask me for how much I spent on lunch that many days. Now, we'll see when I run this, there is a little bit of a glitch in, in a JS bin that we've got to fix. So it asks me how much do I spend. Uh, I spent 23 bucks. Okay. And then there's an error. Um, oh yeah, there's a couple of errors. One of them is that I need to uh, define total, right? Var total equals zero. And we'll talk about this line soon. Um, but this is, what this is going to do is this is going to add up all of our lunches. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But I want to mention this other thing here that what it only ran once what happened there's a warning down here it says exiting potential infinite loop js bin gets nervous as heck about about uh loops loops that won't end and so if you want uh, it to not like it has infinite loop protection that will crash your browser if you want to avoid that you have to put in this code slash slash no protect to your code so i'm going to add that to my code slash slash no protect and now if, run, if I run it again, it should work. 23, 34, and I'm just putting in a bunch of different values. Um, and it says, you spend $176 on lunch this week. That one was from the last time that I executed. Um, I want to talk about how this works. Okay, this line works, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, it's a shorter program than we wrote for our warm-up, but I want to go back to that. Notes. That value, this this uh, line, total equals total plus lunch, adds up all the values when it appears in the loop. So remember, JavaScript does the right-hand side of an equal first and then stores it here. So it looks up total, and that's why it gave me an error before, because it didn't know what total was. When I said it starts at zero and then adds the new value of the lunch, so zero plus whatever I entered goes in the new, the the answer for for total. And then the next time through the loop, it'll take the new value, add add up to the old value, and it this line take, keeps a running total of all the lunches. It says this function was necessary. Parse float. This function was necessary because. When I was prompted, the prompt brings in a string value. It brings in uh, those numbers as a string. And if I were to add them all up, well, that's not adding up numbers. It's adding up strings, which is something different. So the parse float, that function, takes the lunches and then changes them into a number. So that changes them into a number. Uh, and the decimal numbers are called floats in JavaScript. And you've probably heard that um, 
through Code Academy. Float is uh, is a decimal number. And then notice that the two fixed, what that did is that rounded it so that I had two decimal points and my output looked really pretty. Doesn't that look pretty? Sure it does. And I think that's it for this lesson. Let's see if there's another, is there another? Oh, another example. Write a program that asks the user for how many th the times they'd like to roll a die, then do it that many times. I'm going to do that example in part two of today's lesson. And uh, you're welcome to try it on your own then, and then uh, take up the answer with me or you can follow along with me. I'll leave that up to you. Part two coming up.